Good evening, Grove family. It is a delight to be with you on this very special week. This is Holy Week, and tonight I want us to uh, take a pause from our study in Ephesians, and I would like for us to uh, just kind of remember the suffering and the agony that our Lord endured on uh, this night and these night, next couple nights during Holy Week. I want to look look back at his suffering, and uh, I want to do it. I want to go to the cross and then kind of work backwards, um, and ask ourselves the question: Why is Friday called good? Uh, good Friday is that day that we celebrate the crucifixion of our Lord. And why is that good? In John chapter nineteen. We go to the end of the narrative. We find in the 30th verse, <clears throat> it says, Therefore, when Jesus had received the sour wine, and that he said, It is finished. He bowed his head, and he gave up his spirit. It is finished. The it... What is that? The finished. What was completed? Three words in English, one word in Greek. It is the word tetelestai. You may have seen bracelets that have that long word on it. You may have seen shirts. Tetelestai. Tetelestai is a word whose root is found all throughout Scripture. Teleo. And teleo means to be mature, to complete, to finish, to be perfect. As a matter of fact, you will find that word translated those ways in English, in our English translations. For example, in Hebrews chapter 5 and in chapter 6, he contrasts the mature believer with the immature believer. He says in chapter 5, he says, you should be teachers by now, but you still need the milk of the word. And then in the first couple verses of chapter 6, he says, let us move toward, press toward maturity. That's that word, teleo. And matter of fact, we, our Wednesday night adult classes are called telos classes. Uh, and it means to, to mature, it means to, uh, to grow, to complete, to be, to be perfect. Um, this is what my Lord did. He, he matured something. He perfected something. He finished something. Well, what, what is that it that he finished? Um, we find John using this term, teleo, uh, and even tetelestai, a few times. You go all the way back to the fourth chapter of John's gospel, you'll hear Jesus saying this term. He'll say, when the disciples brought him food uh, after he had sent them away while he talked with a Samaritan woman, Jesus sees the disciples come back and he says, he says, I, I, have, I have food you know not of. He says, he goes on to say that it is his meat to do the will of the Father. It is his nourishment to finish what he was sent to do. The scriptures prophesy that Jesus came to seek and to save that which was lost. Jesus will pray in his high priestly prayer in John 17 those same words. He'll say, he says, Father, I have to tell us die. I have finished the work that you have given me to do. Well, what was, what was that assignment? Jesus met in the upper room just a few days before this. He was with his disciples, and he is observing the Passover meal. And it's there in the Passover meal that he converts it to the, what we know it is the Lord's Supper. And in the, in the Passover meal, there are, there are four cups that the, the observant would drink. And the, the meal was, 
was divided into different sections, each section commemorating uh, a different theme of the exodus out of Egypt. And so you would be reading uh, portions of Scripture from Exodus uh, chapters 7 through uh, 14, which is their, their process of, of getting out of Egypt. And then you would celebrate with uh, 14 and 15 of them, them actually crossing the, the Red Sea. <clears throat> and this was, this was what Jesus was doing. But then he, but then he converted it. And he, and he said, in reference to the bread at the meal, he says that this is my body. That, that this lamb that is, his blood is put over the doorposts and the, this lamb and faith in that lamb and God's plan, that is, that is me. And just as the Israelite put faith in what God had said, this is how you escape. Likewise, this is God's plan and how and who we are to put our faith in to escape God's wrath. And that is in the, in the perfect Son of God. And the observant during the Passover meal would, would, would sing and recite different portions of the halal. Uh, that's Psalm 113 through 118. And halal means praise. And those, that section of Psalms uh, has either at the beginning or the end or scattered throughout it phrases like praise the Lord. And Psalm 118 is the final halal. And many believe that when Jesus when it says they left the upper room singing, that, that, that this is what they sang. And if that's so, then he leaves the upper room where he's just warned his disciples that some of them will bet one of them will betray him and that they all will desert him. And he's leaving there to go down to the Kidron Valley where he's going to ask them to pray. He's going to ask some, uh, three others to pray. And he's going to go stone's throw distance to, further to, to pray himself. And he's going to sweat drops of blood. He's going to agonize with the Father. But on the way there, this is the psalm that, that he said, that he sang. First verse of Psalm 118 says, Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his loving kindness is everlasting. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> Verse 22, the stone which the builders have rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. It is, a mar it is marvelous in our eyes. Listen to this verse. This is the day which the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Jesus, my Lord, as he's going to the most excruciating season of his life is singing the Psalms and in the Psalms it says this is the day the Lord has made knowing what this day was going to hold for him knowing what he was going to have to endure he was still able to say let us rejoice and be glad in it what an example what an example my Jesus, when he said it was a finished on the cross, was saying these words in the midst of some of his greatest pain. The psalm goes on to say, O Lord, we beseech you. O Lord, we beseech you, do send prosperity. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. We have blessed you from the house of the Lord. The Lord is God, and he has given us light. You are my God. And I give thanks to you. You are my God. I extol you. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good. For his loving kindness is everlasting. As we consider what makes Good Friday good, one of the things that makes it good is that I have a good father. That even in the most unpleasant of times, in the most excruciating of days, the Psalms give me hope that I can choose and I can indeed praise his name. This is the day the Lord has made. And if God has made this day, 
my God knows what's in this day. Put this, this Bible verse in your mind. Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 14. It says, when God does good, be happy. And when God sends adversity, consider. Is it not the same God who does both? And so my prayer is that by watching Jesus suffer and watching him endure, we likewise can not only find encouragement, but we also can find the pattern. And that in that pattern, we can say, I can praise the Lord for God knows. God knows what's in this day. God has ordered this day. And God has prepared me for this day. And now I can praise him. Anyone can praise him when they're happy. But to praise him, even in the face of adversity, even when you know what lies in front of you, and you can still say, this is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in him. That's where Jesus was a few days prior to. Now we come back to John 19. And Jesus is on the cross. He has felt the wrath of man. And he has felt the wrath of God. The full wrath of God. And we hear Jesus say that word. To tell us die. I, I want to. I, I want to offer something that I hope is it's been such nourishment to my soul, and I pray it's nourishment to your soul. And, and that is a reminder. I, I, I don't need a reminder because I have fallen in love with the Word of God. But I am constantly amazed at the reminders God gives me as to why I love His Word. And we find one of those reasons in this verse, and not only in this verse, but in this word. God, Good Friday is good because God has embedded in his eternal word. He has embedded such treasures that it is, it is so true. Man doesn't live by bread alone, but man lives by the word of God. Every word. And I want, to sh I want to show you this word here, tetelestai. I told you a few moments ago that it comes from the root word teleo, which means to complete, to finish, to be perfect. And you can hear tetelestai. You can hear the teleo in the middle of that word. The word tetelestai, a little grammar lesson real quick, because grammar can teach theology, and it certainly does in this case. Tetelestai is a perfect passive indicative verb. Now, what does that mean? Well, let's go, let's go um, in reverse order here. But passive means that the subject is being acted upon. Something other than the subject is doing the action. Perfect. Perfect means that this is action that is completed. But watch this. It's completed. But the emphasis is not on the completed action, but the emphasis is on the result of the completed action. So therefore, this being a perfect verb means that there is a continuance of the completed action. That... The result is part of the joy of the verb. Okay, perfect passive. What is the it that was finished? The it is the work or the assignment or the task that was given to Jesus. Jesus' task was to go to the cross to redeem sinful man. Jesus is, was, and will always be the second Adam. Adam failed in his probation to honor and obey the Lord. God then, therefore sends a second Adam, a God in the flesh. Adam had no sin nature till he fell. Jesus 
has no sin nature, and he is eternally perfect. So Jesus, as our perfect representative, came, and he was tempted like Adam was, but yet remained sinless. He endured the criticisms and the strife of man, but yet remained perfect. He goes to the cross, he's put up on the cross, and he's called the Lamb by John. John says, behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Why the Lamb? It goes back to Exodus 12, 13, and 14. The Passover Lamb. The Paschal Lamb. The substitute for the sinner. So Jesus The it that he finished was the assignment. The assignment of redeeming man. The assignment of bearing the wrath of God so that I would not have to. The assignment of being the substitute for the sinner. Jesus is the agent acting upon the assignment. Jesus says in John 17, 4, he says, I have completed. I have finished the work that you've given me to do. I have done the assignment. And so this word is beautiful because when Jesus says it's finished, he's saying, I have completed the assignment. However, there is continuing results from that. And so my next question is, what are those continuing results? If the cross and its completion And when Jesus died on the cross, if that's not just simply a past event, but it's also a present one, then what's still present about the past cross? There is a continuing. When Jesus died on the cross, he completed the work of redemption, but there is a a continuing work of redemption. The cross in the past still has present redeeming power. Its result is continuing. That's awesome. God did something with Jesus on the cross, and it has real power today. There's a continuing work of redemption. Redemption's not only still continuing, but the, the sufficiency or the efficacy of the cross is still active and still continuing. The cross has power. Just like Paul said in 1 Corinthians 2, verses 1 through 5, he says, What made my coming to you effective... What was changing people's lives was not that I was a persuasive, charismatic speaker, but it was that the gospel has power. Romans 1, that it is the God, that the gospel has the power unto salvation. Why? Because there's continuing fruit and work from the completed work that Jesus did upon the cross. That is just awesome. That's why this perfect tense verb is so rich theologically. That Jesus completed something. It's done. It is done. Sin, here is the marker. I am planting a marker today, planting a flag, that my flag is here now, yours isn't. It is a marker of victory, but it's not simply in the past. There is a continuing effect from that completed work. Redemption continues. Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 10 tells us that there, there's a, a continuing sanctification process. Listen to Hebrews 10.10. 10. It says this, By this will we have been sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus once and for all. It is a mistake to keep Jesus on a crucifix. He's not there. It is a mistake to re-crucify Christ. Jesus died once and for all. 
And if you believe John 19.30, then you must also believe that what Jesus completed way, the, way back then, 2,000 years ago, what he completed then continues today to offer efficacy, to offer sufficiency, to offer redemption, to offer sanctification. That is awesome. But God doesn't, didn't just stop there. On Sunday, we'll talk about another perfect verb. Because in 1 Corinthians 15, the next perfect verb that we will find is the verb that says he was raised from the dead. The resurrection is not simply a single event in the past. But he was raised. Perfect tense. Jesus raised from the dead. Perfect tense. He raised, completed action. He's, he's not there with continuing results. This is why gathering every Sunday is so special. Because when we gather every Sunday, we are remembering, we are celebrating, and we are telling. We are telling that we believe it is important to set aside this time for theological reasons. Jesus lives. He rose, not just simply as a historical event, but he rose and there's continuing power. Jesus said to Telestai, it is finished. And then he willingly, on his own accord, gives up his spirit. And he dies. Good Friday is good for all the reasons that we've mentioned. We watch our Lord, be, we've watched him be given an assignment and he sees it to the end. As God gives me assignments, I need to see it to the end. And I need to be able to say with my Lord, this is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and I will be glad in it. We see the power. We see the power of the gospel message. It's not just simply a story in antiquity, but it is a living word. Let me tell people about that word believing in that power. We also see the beauty of the Word of God. Theology is not wrapped up simply in reading passages and then deducing, determining implications, finding theologies from that. But God has even woven theology into the tapestry of grammar. And in grammar, we find a wealth of nourishment. What God completed in the past continues to have results in the present. Good Friday was an awful day. We see how ugly sin is. But it was very good in the work that my Lord completed and the example that he left me. Lord, would you help each of us? Help us to feel the weight of this week. Help us to know that we know. Help us to know our own walk with you and to make sure that you are our Lord and our Savior. I pray as we prep for Resurrection Sunday that we will know the joy and the beauty of that in a way we just haven't in a while. Thank you for your beautiful word. And thank you for my beautiful Savior. Blessed is he 
who comes in the name of the Lord. Amen. Thank you for listening. God bless you, church. I'll see you Sunday.